guys we are just uh, checking the audio and uh, once that is done we'll, we'll make make it live You just drop like the YouTube live thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just. So I'll be waiting. I think you should come now. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, can you please see and and tell us if if uh, you are yeah, able you to hear us? Sorry, can you put on the camera? We are live. Okay. Okay, so I think I was just checking on my mobile. Okay, okay, okay. So I think I think it is audible. That's audible, right? So we we had a small tech glitch, but then yes we uh, so today uh, superb. So we are getting comments uh, that uh, they can hear us. So Shorya, uh, just you know wanted to understand like uh, how was uh, I mean how did you started when did you started coding and you know I mean how uh, this uh, you know coding became uh, you know kind of a passion for you. So like I had started coding at the uh, age of seven when I was like watching a video and in between there was an ad which came for IBM which was introducing the Watson robot. So I was like surprised about to see that and then I thought that I should start programming at that age. So the first time I programmed at that age it was really fun and then I self learned my own for around about four years and then had took my career into machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I mean what you're saying you know machine learning, artificial intelligence, so I mean all these things you know I mean <coughs> many you know including uh, uh, you know people doing engineering or, or you know I mean kids learning uh, at your age so they would not even you know know these words and, and you're learning it I mean this is really wonderful. So what, what which school do you study and where are you from? I study in St. Xavier's High School and I'm from Gurgaon. Gurgaon, superb. And uh, so do you have any facility, I mean coding learning facility in the school? Uh, I mean, uh, no. how? Okay, so I mean you started uh, uh, by watching YouTube video, someone mentored you, what was it? Uh, first I have started watching YouTube videos and for like half a month I was trained by a mentor. Acha, superb. So it is always good to have a mentor and, and it really helps. Okay, so I mean uh, now we are talking about, I mean uh, today you know the session is about Python programming. So Python is, is you know now rated at very, I mean it's probably in top three languages across the uh, world, you know, I mean programmer do, use it. So uh, I mean how you started, you know, learning Python because most of the kids they learn uh, things on scratch, they start something on Arduino, but then you went ahead and you know started Python programming. So I mean you know what was it you know the zeal about learning the skill again like i had started from scratch only i had like learned scratch for half a month and then i like first i didn't start python python was at a very last level first just after scratch you can say i learned uh, uh, c plus plus for game development super so so because of that, I thought that building uh, the highest language, which was for that time, was Java only. So I didn't want to learn Java in that case. But when I saw the second thing, Python, with the very basic syntax and like many of the projects were made by uh, Python only, then I started working with Python. Super, super. So I mean, just on a, on a, this is the last question and then, you know, you are, uh, or, you know, on your own and, you know, you can start teaching kids. So just wanted to uh, know and you know I mean it is really important for us as an organization to know as well. Does programming, does coding help you in any way? 
yeah coding helps me in maths like it helps me in solving complex problems then it helps me in physics in, in game development there are a lot of blueprints and all like technical things uh, applying physics geometry which again help me in science and maths so science and maths are the basic things super super and just you know all the viewers who are watching us uh, uh, he also has his own youtube channel Uh, sorry if you can just tell uh, you know i mean the name of the youtube channel and if you want to get you know yeah. here yeah so the name of my youtube channel is programming with shorya and i had started this one month ago super i regularly upload videos on python tutorials minecraft and scratch oh, super i mean all these things you know what you are saying when i was 11 i had no clue what is programming and i was just solving you know maybe some basic maths question but amazing to know that you know kids at at your age and in, in india specific they they are you know fond of programming and i think you would be you know inspiring lot of kids at your age and you are doing commendable uh, you know job and i think coding will be the the digital language to learn i mean how we speak english or hindi or you know other languages this is really important coming years so sure you now you know i i yeah. doesn't you know i i don't want to waste more time so you are on your own and guys now he would be you know teaching some part of python installation process and maybe some of uh, maybe a small project for you know kid to take away and he would scra- uh, you know uh, he would uh, uh, screen share if you have any doubts you can comment us uh, you can you can you can put the you know your doubts on comment and we have you know people who would be watching the comment and will tell shorya to uh, incorporate the doubts yeah shorya so all positive yeah sure super super yeah. so you can now start screen share and you know i'll just turn off my camera so you are all, all you know you get all the focus yeah all the best boy okay so good morning to all the coders and their parents i am shorya student of st xavier's high school in grades and studying in grade 7 I have been a senior game developer and a data scientist from the past three years. I had started my journey with Scratch and then continued it with AI, machine learning, and robotics. Now I would like to share what all you can do with Python. There are many people who think that Python is just a programming language, but it is more than programming language. Do you all want to know? Type in yes or no in the chat box. So I can see many yes and no's. So with starting with that, let's continue. So by in Python, you can build application, websites, and build machine learning and artificial intelligence project projects. I would like to share a PPT which I had made two days ago. Okay. So what are you going to do with Python? The founder of Python has been Guido van Rossum, who was a German. It was made in the late nineteen eighties. Machine learning, scikit-learn, NumPy. These are one of the main things and libraries in Python. So, starting with machine learning, scikit-learn, NumPy, pandas. These are some of the sorts of libraries which you, I'll be teaching you in the future uh, webinars. In that. you can cover the whole machine learning topic then you have artificial intelligence for example to build a self driving car torch and numpy these are the two libraries which are very useful you might be thinking what is numpy pandas scikit-learn torch these are just simple libraries they are nothing to worry about the applications which are built through python are using python extra which is a very uh, like a unique app for iOS only then you can build websites using flash django but for that you need to learn html css and web development there are many backend systems which could be made using python some of them are using mysql and mongodb 
The most used MySQL is the easiest of the one of the most expensive and the most useful backend systems. Okay, starting with that, I would like to tell you one basic thing. In today's session, I will teach you four main sections, which are first section will be covering installation and predefined functions. The second section will be covering variables with data types. And the third section will be covering comments and user input. So, the section four will be the whole combined and a mixture of all the section one, two, and three. It will be covering one new topic, which are conditional statements. So, without wasting time, let's start. The basic necessary is Python on your system. So, Python is a very important thing you should have on your system because without that, you can't learn Python. So, I would like to open my Google Chrome screen and please type in yes or no if you can see my Google screen. I'm waiting for all of your replies. Okay, so there are more than 20 people who have written, yes. Oh wow, that's amazing. So let's start. Are you all excited? Yes, you are. I can see it on your typing skills. So, starting with that, let's type in python.org in our search bar. Now, to type in python.org, you need a web browser. And like with my experience, it doesn't matter which web browser you have. Firefox, Opera, Google Chrome, Safari, all of them would work. So, now I'm using Google Chrome for this uh, tutorials. And I will type in python.org in the search bar. Now, as you can see, this is the original documentation of Python. Yeah, and here you can download the original and the most used Python software, which is IDLE Python. Now, do not click on the Downloads tab, but hover on it and click on Python 3.8.3. As you can see, it's a 25.5 MB software, so this might take a time. Since I've already installed it in my system, so let me show you. Are you all interested like in programming or in whatever skills? You need to identify your strengths in each and everything. Each and everything is important in Python. And I need your 100% attention for this because we will be building complex projects in this. Okay, coming back to the topic, we had Python installed, okay? Now, click on this .exe file. Now, you can see this installation wizard. Now, this is where you install Python on your system. So, let's begin. Click on the original directory only, which is in program files. Do not change it. That might become a great problem for you. Just click on install. And this will install all the libraries and necessary things you need to get started with Python. Now, I would like to tell you, Python is a very easy language to learn. You can learn it in around about like one, two months, okay? With your full interest. It's not at all difficult, I'll tell you. Now, if I begin with like Python, all of these Python projects, you might not understand them. That's why this course, I'll be covering all of the basics you need to learn to make your first project. So, I would like you to say, if you were able to install Python on your system and get this result, I'll be waiting for you in the comment section. I need a done or not done. Please, please. Okay, so let's begin. Now, if I cover all of the basics today, then it might be very confusing. So let me start with the first topic. 
as I showed you in my PowerPoint presentation, the session one is going to cover predefined functions and data uh, and uh, predefined functions and the installation. Now, since we have done the installation, let's open Python. So let me just close this. And okay, now if you click on this Windows icon here. You type in CMD, you will get this sort of screen. Okay? Now, here you need to type in Python. This might not come in your systems. It is going to say, it is going to say, Python is not recognized as an internal or an external command. Nothing to worry about, my friends. It's very easy to solve this. Again, click on this Windows icon. Type in Python. Right click on IDLE and say open file location. So this is the place where we had installed Python on our systems. Okay. Now open the file location for IDLE again by right clicking on it. Okay. So now here we can see Python is installed. Now to locate the location of Python, click on the scripts. Click on here, click here and copy this path. So now, this path is the place where we have installed Python. Now, last step to install Python on your system is click on the Windows icon and type in E and C. These are the system variables so that you can access all of the variables in your command prompt, PowerShell, and you can run your Python programs. Now, click on this. Click on environment variables. Here you can see variables for Gitika and system variables. Now, you need to edit variables in both of them. Click on path. I'll repeat again this step because this might be a little confusing for you. Click on path. Click on edit. Okay, let me just change this path. Now, click on new and paste this. Now, many of you won't have this edit option. So, you just need to create a new type in path and paste it. I'll not do it since I already have it. Again, the same thing here. Let me just delete this and tell you how you can do it. Okay, I guess that some people are not able to see my Python screen. Just one second. So is my screen visible? Please write in the chat box. Let me see. Yeah, sorry. I think I can see. Uh, let us figure out. Yeah, I'll wait. So I guess all of you can see me. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, it's it's live, uh, not a problem. 
Okay, there are many people who are saying start again, so let me start from the beginning only. Okay, so is my Chrome screen visible? Okay, so now, as I told you, we need to download Python on our own systems, which is a very necessary thing. Since we'll be using Python for all our purposes, so to download Python, you need to go to the original site, which is python.org. Now, you need a web browser for it. A web browser can be anywhere. Opera, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, anything. So, I'll be using Chrome for this. Now, to keep it simple, let me just type in python.org in my search bar. Okay, now here you can see the screen is visible. Now, this is the original site where you can download Python on your systems. Here you can even find the documentation. We will not go into it. Now, do not click on downloads. It will locate you somewhere else. Just hover upon it. Then click on Python 3.8.3. I have already done the install, so this might take a while. I'll wait for two minutes so that all of you can download. Please write done if you were able to install this .exe file in the chat box. So, sorry, I mean, it, it looks, uh, I mean, easy to install, yeah? I mean, we just need to go to Python website and, and just uh, get the download for uh, if people are using Macbook or, or Windows. So, it's not that, that uh, difficult for, at least for the installation part. What do you say? Exactly. I get it. It's very easy to download Python on your system. Rather to download Java and C++, you might take one whole day because there are <laughs> like more than 10,000 features you need to download for it. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. So I think, yeah, we are, we are getting feedback that uh, they, they have installed. So Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. Like There are no technical difficulties. So with that, I would like to begin. So, all of you, are you are you just excited for this whole journey of like around about one and a half hour? If you are, then stay connected with me and let's begin. Right? Yes in the chat box and no if you are feeling bored. <laughs> Super. Okay. How to download the exe file? Let me tell you again. There was some issue. So... Go ahead to the downloads tab, click on Python 3.8.3. .3. This will automatically download the exe file for you. You do not have to do anything. Do not um, click on downloads, just hover on it. Okay, I can see many replies that are excited. Yes, done. Okay, so now let's continue our journey. Okay, so now click on the exe file. Now click on the exe file. And here you will get a wizard. But there it will be written install on your system. So just click on install. And do not do anything.
Okay, do not install Pycharm or any other text editor. We'll do it in the later webinars. Do not install it now or, in, or else it will be a mess in your system. Okay, so hopefully the uh, progress bar which which was coming here would have been completed. Yeah. So now uh, just type in IDLE in your window. Uh, just click on this Windows icon and then type in IDLE and hit enter. So I'll just wait. There are many people who are getting confused. I'll wait for them so that they can download the whole thing. So this is how uh, uh, the ideally looks. I mean, this is where uh, uh, everyone will code on Python, isn't it? Here, this is the place where we'll be writing code for today. Okay, super. Okay, so there are like many people who uh, have downloaded. Okay, let me just repeat how you had to click on the Windows icon. Just this Windows icon, which is on your left, just click on it and then type in ID and then you'll automatically get this. If you don't, then type in ID in the whole thing. Okay. Now just click on it and you'll open a window like this. Now nothing to be scared about this all Python 3.8.3 tags and all. Don't need to worry about this. This is nothing. Just your version and all and all the licensing which you need to uh, have to install before during that visiting the progress bar which was going from uh, which was completing that, that's all the thing which you had to install so nothing to worry about now i guess all of you would have installed python okay so yeah i can start now all of you please head to this file tab this file thing just click on it and then click on new file what happens with this is it creates a new file that we'll be writing our own code. There'll be no predefined code which will come like print hello, print hello, or A equals 5. There'll be no such code you, we need to write on our own. And one thing very important I would like to tell you. Let me just open my notepad. One thing, one main thing. Whenever you give your file an extension, the file for example the name of a file is test you need to give it an extension dot py this defines that your file test is a python file since if you just type in python here you can see if you cut thon py is a main so always this is the extension but there might be a problem with you and that problem is when you save this file by uh, pressing control plus s let me write this command somewhere okay control plus s is to save your file okay and and control plus O is to open a file. These are some basic uh, shortcuts you need to know. And here you can see it automatically chooses Python. Since it's an original version of Python, it will already take it. So what you need to do is just type in it. Let's say this test. 
you can choose like and doesn't matter a name can be anything you can even type it blah 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 blah, blah and just a file name doesn't matter then we give this first s okay and not give on the school these are some problems when you give them. and just don't forget do not give any underscore or spaces that might create a problem let me just say this on my desktop now click on save Okay, so now I can see that many people are able to just type in if you were able to do all of this, which I just told you. I'll be waiting for your replies for yes and no's. Okay, shall we move ahead? I want to see some smiles. Okay, this is somebody has written. I've saved the file. This is amazing. You could do it. And there are many people who have written yes, 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 yes. And like I, you are even greater than me. I couldn't <laughs> do this in my first time. Like my teacher only did it for me, and you just did it. This is wonderful. Maybe your teaching amazing. techniques. Yeah. Okay, let's begin. So now we'll be covering three defined functions. Since in our PowerPoint presentation, the section one had contained the installation and three defined functions. Now you must be wondering what does this key term means? Predefined. Functions. Nothing to be scared about. It's very, very, very simple. It's just that when the founder had like made Python, he had built in some functions which can be used by all of us, whoever have installed Python on their systems. To do that, the there is only one predefined function. If I would have told you, which is print. Now what this does is basically it prints the text which you have written in this brackets. Okay. Now you need to put double quotes like this. Double quotes are important because you are indicating that all of the thing, all of the uh, text you are putting is a string, not a number. Okay. That might be a problem. And do not make this mistake, please. This might be very boring. Okay, so now you can type in any text you want. Let me say, "Hello, owners. How do you do?" Now, this if I click on Run, Run module, as you can see, "Hello, owners. How do you do?" Now, I would like if all of you could just tell me in the chat box, like, what was the statement you wrote to run run your first program. And let me give you a congrats. You have written your first Python code. If you were able to write print, uh, uh, print hello coders. Let me see who else could have done this. I wait for your replies.
so this is how quick uh, i mean someone who write uh, say i mean their first 3 4 lines of code and they can quickly see the outcome this is really fantastic this was the best part when i wrote my first code print hello i would like amaze that i have written my first python code this reminds me there are many my... people are writing <laughs> yeah stay stay home stay but this this really reminds me yeah. you know my my first year of engineering Uh, where uh, I, I had this C C C plus plus classes, and I had no access to computer before, and you know my friends, I mean teacher were telling us that okay write a simple hey them just write hello world, and you know couple of guys were able to do it, but I had really no clue, and I was I think what uh, maybe eighteen years that time, uh, I I was just you know in in my engineering first year, so this is really great. So we have got. Even I'm like loading C plus plus right now. <laughs> so okay, stay home, stay safe. Hello, friends. Okay, great. So I think couple of them are okay. doing it, and as you said, this might not be the first time you know they'll be able to get it. But then I mean, it is yeah. good that you know I mean some of them are able to do it, and you know they they might uh, uh, interest them more you know for the for the upcoming. classes uh, we might have on 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 the channel and you know on your own channel as well yeah even i can see abhishek wrote print coding is super pop it's exactly correct even praveen wrote hello coders and it's exactly correct i think this this, is how it's, you it's can a, write it's your a, first code i think it's their request they want to see maybe print coding is super power is it so if we can we can just quickly change the the line and and it is just in in moment it it can be swapped yeah yeah sure i'll just change the line so it is it is so easy print i mean i i could re really recollect you know now we have this print and that time i think it was print f and then we used to write and and something i, I don't really recollect yeah even i would like recall if i would like been doing c++ you need to make a class then an attribute and what not mm. but in python is just one line of code to do it yes sir, yeah include include h and and then then i i yeah, yeah, yeah. include ios stream <laughs> and okay that was like very confusing right super but then i mean i i, I think this is really exciting part of you know i mean being on the on this uh, uh, episode because i really like that you know i mean kids at your age i mean they they are really uh, you know i mean they are they are willing to learn because when when i was at your age i mean we we could only think of you know uh, when i could go out and you know play cricket with friends or or you know do cycling or something like that it's really great please please yeah. continue please continue yeah i'll continue with that okay one second i just stop stop screen sharing one second Okay, now since we have covered the predefined functions and installation, so you've completed section one of this course. Now coming on to section two, which covers all of your variables and data types. Okay, so now these variables. Okay, somebody has written can we add emoji? Oh, okay, no, you can't add emojis in Python because it might be a little confusing because emoji has some. Uh, UTF-8 attribute, which I even I don't know about this. So yeah, I'll keep you posted if uh, if you I find how to add an emoji in print. Okay. Now beginning with variables. Now you must be wondering, what are variables? It's just a like a variable or a letter or a Word, word, letter, statement, anything which doesn't has spaces in between. For example, a, anything, small a, big a, small b, big b, anything. You just need to put an equal to sign in front of it. So now this defines the value. This defines the value of your variable. For example, I can give you, I can give the variable a value five. Ten, a string, a float, a float string integer. These are a part of data types which we'll be doing after variables. Okay. Now, in 
an int starts with a normal integer like 5, 6, 1, 3, 7, and or you can go on like 90, 87, anything. Now, these are the integers. What are float? Float are decimal fraction numbers. For example, 1.2, 3.5, or 3 upon 5. It's not 3 divided by 5. It's 3 upon 5. If you write it in like normal thing, it's like 3 upon 5 like this. Then you even have 7.3. And like you can go on. But remember, a float could have a decimal, a fraction. That's it. These two are the main things you need. Okay, let me just clear this. Okay. Now I'll close the screen. Okay, now you must be. Okay, let me just leave this here only. Now, for defining a variable, you need A equals to 7 or B equals to, like you can say, 1.2. C equals to quarters. Now, the data type for 7 is integer, also known as int. Now, the data type for 1.2, which is B, is float. And for C, the data type is STO, or you can just say string. Depends upon you. You can use short forms, long forms, and whatever. Now, let me just delete it, or else it will run this code also and it give me a stupid error. Let me just remove what it says. Okay, so let me just write in my notepad file here. The three data types. Are integer, load, and string. I'll give it a short form also. Okay. Now, with starting with this, if you just say, if you just run this, like, let me just run this. You need to save your file before you run. You don't get anything. It just says coding is a superpower because it it only knows that A has a value of 7, B has a value of 1.2, C has a value of coders, which is a string. It doesn't know that what it has to do. Now, I say, you need to print A. And you need to print B. And you need to print C. Now you can see 7.7, 1.2, and coders. This is a very basic thing you like need to know because in a project, variables, print statements, and Python in your system and in your mind is very important. Very, it's a basic necessity. Like if you start a project, you need variables, you need predefined functions. These are the like two very particular sections which I wanted to tell you since the third section won't cover so technical part but yeah uh, the third section will be more of a theory so now beginning with that are you all ready for this and all of you please tell me in the chat box were you able to define all the variables and print it I wait for you So, uh, Shorya, again, you know, I mean, uh, while I was doing C, so we used to uh, uh, declare a variable like int A and then, you know, uh, store a value. So here there is not, no requirement. You can just type in A equals and then it stores a value, is it? Exactly, sir. Python automatically detects the data type. You don't have to say that it should be an int, it should be a string. You don't have to define it. It's just so simple. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's very easy to learn Python than C and O. 
I found it very easy. Of course, I mean we can we can see that. Super. Hmm. And all of you, please put in your chat box. Were you able to do it or not? I am waiting. I wait for another like last two minutes. Okay, so I guess we can begin, right? Yeah. I have like four or five people just have done, have defined, and yes, turned on. Thanks for making sense. Okay, perfect. Let's move go ahead. Okay. Now, I would like to share how you can find the data type. For example, a newbie or a beginner, he must not understand int, he must not understand float, and he will not understand string. To make it simple for him, you just need to type print, put in, in the parentheses, put type, what type you want. I want you to print the type of A. And now run it. Here you can see it prints, prints class int because Python automatically detected that the value of A7 is an integer. Now, even if you put B, it will detect as in float. Then I get C, str, or string, anything short forms. Here you can see. Now, this class tells you the class of C is str. Nothing to worry about much. Okay. So now I would like to share. This looks very plain. You just print the type of C. You don't know which type is it. If I say C and say comma, what this does is that it says C has a class of str. Okay. This basically tells us that the class of C is str. Now, this is very, very simple. It's just known as concatenation. Where you concatenate a string, a int, a string, a float, a string, and a string. It's very simple. To like perform such various things and plus, minus, and all, don't worry, these are very simple. Once you like go ahead with all of this, it'll be a hands-on cake for you. If I even say print A and I can say B. I don't think so this is going to work because we are trying to concatenate two strings. Remember, two strings. Okay, no, it worked. It worked. So now, another way for it is yeah, it's, con um, it's concatenation. Now, the other way is to put a plus sign, but this won't work. Okay, it worked. Okay, I will tell you how to get an error in this. Now, what if you had said A and put in B here? This gives us an error. It can only concatenate STR, not float to STR. This says that A can only be concatenated with a string. But A cannot be concatenated with a float. To do that, type in str and in brackets would be. Now what this does, this converts B into an string. Okay? Now you, if you would run this, it will surely work. Here you can see A1.2. So, how was the section 2 with you? I see in the comments, let's see who has done section 2 with a full of excitement and perseverance. I'll be waiting for your yes and no's in your iChat box.
Okay, I can see Praveen is writing STR. Is it a structure? No, it's not a structure. It's a string. Now, if you type in string and cut ing, you can see STR. This is what you can uh, do. These are just shortcuts. Nothing much. Look, you can't convert a string to a float. You can't convert a string to a float. You can only convert a float to a string. Because a string has some characters which cannot be converted into a float. Is it clear to all of you? If there is any query, you can still ask me. Great, Praveen, you understood. Okay. I'm glad how she did it correct. I can even see... Okay, I can even see Praveen has done it. I can see Arjit has done it. I can see Kitika. I can see Manshu. I can see a lot of many people. I can say Talkable Gifts has done. Master Tech has done. Ashutosh has done. Well, well, well. Well done. So just think this was your first Python. First three lines of code, basically. If you just cut down all of this. First three lines of Python code, my friends. This is just the start of the journey. Okay. Archit is writing what its use. Okay, listen. Do not find the uses right now because we aren't creating any projects. In the section 4, which will be the second sec uh, two more sections after, in that I'll tell you what they are using. They are using many things. Okay, I can see someone is asking for the link download. Yeah, I'll surely send the links download. Yeah, we can convert an integer to a string. Easy. Just the same thing. Type in A also. And if you run this, here you can see A7. It doesn't matter if it's a string or a float. It only matters if a string can be a float. Oh, sorry, a float can be a string. An int integer can be a string, but a string cannot be float and int. Okay, the site for the download is not python.com, it's python.org. Okay, Archit, well done. I could answer your query, that's perfect. Okay, Ashutosh, can you tell me how are you finding this session? Are you getting it? Okay, yeah, you can. This is a website Python would worry. So with that, let's just continue. Okay. Now the last topic for like no, let me just stop my screen share one second. So now, let me just cover section 3. It's a very easy section. Hardly it's going to take me 10 minutes to cover with this. Now, what happens here? I want to say that A has a value 7. And if I just go make, uh, print this down here, a lot now, and I forget what was the value for A. Now, comments come in. Just put a hashtag and type in anything you want. And if you run this, 
you won't get an error. Now, you need to listen carefully. What happens here is this line of code which you can see here, it doesn't run this. It just says that I can see a hashtag here. It means that the code is not a code. It is just a garbage value. And what does garbage value mean? Garbage value means that all of this thing, like, let me just say ing and ck, whatever this is, this is no keyword. It is just a comment. Okay? It's nothing much to worry about of, of all of these things. Even, I would like to even share we just, if you even just type in anything here and run this, look, this says GTG and all of this is not defined because it knows that th there is no keyboard like this and no, there is an hashtag to tell that it's just a garbage value. So remember to put a hashtag before you write all of this because hashtags are very important. Even if I share that A equals to 8, this won't change the value of A. The value of A would still uh, be 7 only. Because it's a comment. It's a comment. Now, even if I run this, here you can see it become a, becomes A. Because it knows. It needs to update the value. Because I've written A equals 8. So do and do make sure you use comments in your projects. It is very helpful, very, very, very helpful. By my experience, I will tell you, comments are one of the most important things you need to know before starting machine learning, artificial intelligence, and projects. So, I would like if all of you could tell me yes or no for these comments. Were you able to write them? Was there any technical difficulty? I'll wait for your queries. Okay, so I can see ma Master Tech 64 is telling me for all multi line comments. I'm not going to multi line comments right now, okay? It might be very confusing for you. In the project, I'll tell you. Because if you just combine hashtags and multi line comments, you might get very much. I would like if I would not tell you right now. I'll tell you later. I'll surely tell you later. Don't worry for these things. They're very easy for you, all of you. So, Shorya, now, I mean, if, if that was it, uh, would you like to give any, uh, you know, uh, any exercise that, you know, probably, I mean, by the time, you know, maybe a next session, if we plan, so they, what they can, you know, do so that, you know, they can, they can practice it more and, you know, learn it and, and, you know, they can join for, uh, little advance or maybe some application yeah, i would like to share just one project and okay i just want to cover one topic so that they can build the project which i'll be telling them i'll just cover one small topic so now hopefully you understand variables and all these are just the basics okay to start with your homework First of all, just revise, just revise what all I have done and taught you all these variables and all. Like, if I continue with this, the main topic you should know is data types and concatenation. These are the two main things you need to focus on. And like in the upcoming sessions, I would make I would make a project quiz with uh, covering two new topics which are conditional statements and user input. 
those might be a little confusing for you since already we have covered more than eight to nine topics today. And your homework is to just revise what all I've done, and I'll not give you any project to confuse you. And without any projects, I would like to just tell you one more thing: do not leave Python at this stage. You've almost covered the whole basics. And if you leave right now, then it will not be a good thing because you've almost covered the whole basics of Python. All of the children, parents, and all of you, whoever has understood this session, just think you have almost finished Python. Just think, okay? And actually, you have almost finished Python on your. Uh, all the basics of Python have been like, cleared off with the variables and all. And uh, just two more topics to finish up of your uh, baking on the cake and. Okay, somebody wants a project. Okay, master tech six three four. Okay, I'll give you a project in like one or two minutes. Let me just think. But if I go with the quiz, you'll not be able to do because we need to cover conditional statements. We need to cover user input. Okay, that might be a little bit difficult. So let me just uh, try and think for a very small project and tell you in one. Okay, so I've got a project. It's a very simple project. Let me just announce it. One second. Is this screen visible? No. So what happens is, now you need to print this is basics. Of Python, then you need to print. You need to make three variables. You can take any one, and those should have value of seventy-two, three, and four. This is one variable. Then the other one should have one point seven four two three. It can be a random value, and one should have a string. It could be. I could say coder. Coder, how do you do? Okay, how you do? Now covering with this. This, this. So the first thing is this, and in last, it should print the data type. Of a oh, of the variables. So just all of you can note this down. I'll be waiting. Okay. Thanks a lot, and please do join me in the upcoming webinars. Please don't be late because we'll be building a very huge project of a quiz. You will be enjoying it a lot, and do not uh, the parents do not come because all the children will show you the project. So stay tuned with me and keep uh, keep learning Python big projects. For any further queries, you can contact me. You can contact me on nine eight zero nine zero eight. Why don't you just type it? You know, maybe. I'll just type it in the chat box. Chat or maybe I think you can utilize uh, the same screen, yeah. Numbers. You can just increase the font. Yeah, one second. I'll just sh stop share. Okay. My number is nine eight zero nine zero eight double four double four. I'll increase the font size for all of you. That's visible. Okay, if all of you are happy, please do type yes in the chat box. That would be very helpful for me, and I would 
like to finish this webinar for today. Please stay tuned with me and for any further queries again, contact me on 9809084. So see you again on the next webinar. Superb, Shorya. So I, I'm sure uh, uh, many uh, kids, you know, who have joined us today, maybe with parents. I, I saw a couple of schools on Facebook and you know YouTube. They have also joined us. So it was a full-fledged learning hour, uh, you know, with us. And I really appreciate that you know you spend your time. I think many of us, uh, in fact, you know, including me, I was you know learning with you and you know uh, just remembering what days we had, you know, when I was in engineering. But then yes, it was really great that you know you're you're doing good stuff. Uh, so uh, maybe I mean if we have you know future uh, session with Shorya, we'll definitely put it up. And uh, just on a on a you know uh, closing side, if any one of you know you know a kid like Shorya who is doing good in you know STEM, coding, robotics, Arduino, anything, uh, you can connect us. Let us know that you know we can also get him on board. You know, taking a session like how uh, Soria has done today, and uh, we have huge force in India. You know, who are young, you know, school-going kids. So I think we have to motivate them, and you know, we have to get this thing going and innovation keep running. Plus, uh, just wanted to you know uh, update one more thing that we have also come with STEM online quiz. You can participate by paying just hundred rupees, and uh, it will be a four member who will be coming live. And uh, the winner takes 400 rupees, so we do not charge anything. It's just a, a quiz, a stand quiz show that we are organizing. And uh, uh, go to our Facebook page; all the details are there. And uh, thank you, Shorya. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And he has his own channel thanks. once again, and uh, uh, program programming with Shorya, right? Yeah, I just gave you an overview for it. <laughs> okay. So if you just type in programming with Shorya, you'll automatically get one channel here. Super. And here I regularly upload videos on Python, Minecraft, Scratch and what not. Okay, Great. so I'm like looking forward if you could just subscribe and like my channel for more videos and I'll update you all the time. Definitely. So, I think, you know, anyone who has liked the video, please, please go ahead and, you know, encourage such kids like them subscribe them you know and and support them you know by whatever means we can do and superb shorya we will be in touch and for the next session we'll you know <laughs> talk to the uh, you know people who have attended and based on their feedback we'll come back to you and you know we'll request for another session yeah okay thank you so sure. much boy thank you so much thanks sure.